does super effective damage and increases uh, Lorantis' two most important stats in that matchup, it's attack and defense. So uh, kind of getting Lorantis in at the right time, increasing its stats maybe before Snorlax goes too crazy because, yeah, you don't want to get Snorlax in Trick Room with a Belly Drum up. That is not going to end well for Lorantis. <laughs> and, of course, over on Nils' side, there is that Incineroar and Landris Arian combo. You know, that double Intimidate, you know, Lorantis will just eat that up with that contrary ability to just reverse it and get those attack boosts. That yeah, should be fun. Um, we're seeing a nice matchup, too, where, you know, uh, again, we have Tapu Fini versus Tapu Koko, so the battle for terrain could make a difference here. Uh, not a whole lot of status effects going either way, but whether or not uh, Tapu Koko's electric train is on the field could make a difference for both Menectric and for Tapu Koko. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure if this is the exact same build as Brian Yum seen from earlier, but, you know, previously we did see that Cresselia being a bit more offensive with that Psyche MZ, trying to get as much damage out on the field. Of course, that Psyche MZ not really seeing any targets that it wants to kind of hit over on Nils' side. You know, it's a good point, you know. Um, we're seeing Trisoli use a wide variety of items this year where um, you know, it can't quite survive forever the way it used to, as we've seen a couple of rounds today. So uh, some players choosing to go a little more aggressive with it, but, you know, the Psyche EMZ really only makes a difference if you can hit something with it. Um, there's a lot of tough targets. I guess the one thing that would be nice um, is that if Incineroar is knocked off, I guess at least it can't be knocked off, but that's, <laughs> uh, you know, pretty meager trade-off. And here we go now, jumping into round one, or sorry, not round one, game one between these two players, Alvin on the left, Nils on the right. Uh, it looks like the players are now ready to send out their leads and get this battle started. Who is going to come out on top, Alvin Hedayat or Nils Dunlop? Lorantis and Manetric are the leads that Alvin decides to go with. Right off the bat, Snorlax and Mimikyu are the leads that Nils decides to go with. So Nils puts his trademark lead on the table here. You know, it's like, all right, Mimlax is my thing. What are you going to do about it? We see uh, Manectric and Lorantis on Elvin's side of the field. Uh, Lorantis potentially pretty strong in this matchup. Um, you know, certainly, he, if he can get rolling at Snorlax, it's great. But you, like, like we mentioned in the pregame, you don't want to let Snorlax get the belly drum up and get an advantage. Uh, Manectric, potentially able to volt switch, maybe break Mimikyu substitute, quickly get out of battle. Um, also, would have been nice if Tapu Koko had come out, which I think is another option that Elvin was probably playing for, but no Tapu Koko to be found yet. Manetric going to Mega Evolve, going to get that Intimidate ability. Uh, not going to matter too much if that Snorlax can easily just uh, play the drums on its belly and maximize its attack stat. Might impact that Mimikyu depending on whether or not it's a physical or special one. You know, a lot of Mimikyus do actually opt for the uh, Shadow Ball variant instead of the Shadow Claw. Manectric gonna hit into that disguise with a Volt Switch. Gonna go ahead and bust it right there and allow Manectric to switch in, maybe expecting a Trick Room to come up, so maybe Alvin can actually get in his own Snorlax at this point. Yeah, that could help you. I mean, it's pretty clear what's going to happen on Nils' side unless something really crazy happens here. So they're gonna have to win the battle of slow Pokemon. Uh, it's gonna be important to see what Lorantis does here awful. They're also uh, not likely to have some way to knock out Mimikyu at a single blow and reset Trick Room that way, or avoid Trick Room from going out completely, I guess. So uh, we see a Z move coming in here. And it's gonna be a, uh, yeah, the Ghostian Z is gonna activate on that Mimikyu here. Is it just gonna go for big chunks of damage it looks like it's going to draw away everything and go for a Z Destiny Bond and get that follow me effect that Lorantis cannot now go for a uh, superpower into that Snorlax. But it looks like Lorantis is actually slower than the Snorlax here. And it is going to eat away at its berry with that gluttony ability, healing all the way back up to full health as Lorantis actually using turn to set up a substitute. So smart play right there from Alvin. Yeah, so that's uh, one thing we don't see from many other Lorantis. Uh, typically, um, the, the, the three attack build is probably the most common, where uh, trainers teach it uh, Leaf Blade, Superpower, and Knock Off. Uh, with Substitute instead here, uh, makes it a little easier to deal with Snorlax, where it doesn't matter how, how much damage it's doing. Um, it's only going to break the Substitute once. Uh, but, however, Trick Room not going up here, uh, the Destiny Bond effect in Mimikyu means targeting would be pretty, diff or pretty ineffective this turn, at least very dangerous. So another tricky turn. Yep, Snorlax is going to use his turn to protect, uh, going to try to not take a superpower uh, right off the bat. Mimikyu is going to go for a Shadow Ball. That Intimidate from my Nectric so big. Uh, well, it would have been big if it hit into... Oh, actually, it is big because it doesn't even break that substitute. As Cresselia uses Trick Room here to slow things down a little bit. But again, this Lorantis is actually slower than the Snorlax. 
Yeah, so that's a big deal. Um, trainers run Snorlax at a variety of speeds, and Lorantz is too, so it's tough to know exactly uh, what the speed tiers are going to be depending on the way the players have trained it. Snorlax quicker here, Lorantz under speeding it, and we see that substitute surviving. Lorantz's defense is nothing to be trifled with, uh, able to survive, and that is really bad for Nils. Um, still threatening a lot of damage with that Snorlax, but not going to have a way to avoid getting hit with the big superpower here, and won't immediately be able to respond to Lorantz, because even if he breaks the substitute, uh, Snorlax is going to attack before Mimikyu, so this isn't a great way to deal damage. Man, I, did, I actually thought that that would fade the substitute, but, you know, Lorantis has decent defense and that Intimidate from that Minetra paying off so well. And, you know, one of the things about that, uh, you know, using that Z Decima right off the bat is that maybe you can't even go for a never-ending Nightmare to deal a big chunk at all to the Cresselia. And Superpower actually does 50% to that Snorlax, and here comes the boost. This is what Lorantis does with that contrary ability, just trying to bulk up, essentially, as Snorlax uses Frustration, gonna fade that substitute on the Lorantis. Uh, I, I'm just not used to saying Lorantis on stream. <laughs> and here comes the Psychium Z activating. It is gonna be the Shattered Psyche from Cresselia, gonna go off and do some damage. Yeah, it could be targeting this Pokemon, perhaps trying to knock out Snorlax. I was a little curious if we'd see the Z move, or if we'd see a Cresselia maybe try to anticipate a Trick Room. Could be important to score a knockout here. Yeah, so it is going to target down that Snorlax. Important to get the KO, but if not, maybe Cresselia can just follow up with a Psychic of its own. Snorlax barely hangs on with just, like, probably, what, two hit points at that point? Mimikyu does reverse the trick in here, then allows Snorlax to move, but the Cresselia can just follow up with a Psychic. Yeah, right, not getting the knockout, but still in a nice position because Snorlax's speed is sandwiched between Cresselia's and Lorantis's. They're kind of like, regardless of whether or not Trick Room is up, um, if Alvin wants to focus on that slot, Snorlax isn't going to do anything. Uh, we have seen that it has Protect, so there's some danger there. Uh, we'll have to see what Nils does, if he's going to give up on Snorlax or uh, try and work away or, around it. Mimikyu switching out in Sinor, going to take the field, but Lorantis does not mind that at all. Going to get another attack stat uh, raise there as Snorlax protects itself. Uh, maybe trying to set up a turn where it can go for a fake out and go on the offensive as Cresselia goes for a psychic into that Snorlax slot. Lorantis using this turn, though, beautiful, beautiful substitute right there from Alvin. Yeah, it does exactly what he needs to. Uh, doesn't try to guess on what Pokemon is going to be in that slot. And if he'd fired a Leaf Blade at Mimikyu, that would have been uh, not very effective. Instead, getting that substitute up, preventing Incineroar from using Fake Out on this turn. Uh, I mean, I guess he could. He could not break the substitute with the Fake Out. <laughs> Wouldn't suggest it. And uh, so now, even if Incineroar uses a uh, Fake Out on Cresselia, the best case scenario for Nils is he gets the Fake Out return and loses Snorlax for it. Incineroar uses Fake Out. Cresselia flinches, cannot move as Snorlax uses Frustration. Gonna Just going to get the KO on to the Cresselia here. So, you know, Snorlax did its job, was able to uh, get the KO, and looks at, <laughs> <laughs> there it is, the legendary duo as Lorentz actually goes for a superpower onto Incineroar, gets the KO there. You know, Lorentz is just sitting so pretty behind the substitute. Yeah, that's a pretty good call. You know, Incineroar is a Pokemon that can be pretty tough to deal with. Don't want to keep getting intimidated. And, you know, it's still, with Snorlax being so well health, uh, it's not like a super high priority. Uh, the Pokemon that can use Fake Out is now out of the way, so it's kind of like, how would you set up a situation where Snorlax can actually attack with the amount of health it has? Um, you know, good trade, you know. Uh, also, keep Lorantis' stats in mind as well, where it's not used superpower twice, it's been intimidated, so uh, it's getting carried away quickly. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, Going to be dealing a lot of damage, and <laughs> its defenses are just so high. <laughs> like, it's doubled its defenses, pretty much. So, um, Minetra going to take the field here for Alvin's side. The Intimidate is going to hit into that Snorlax slot and the Lander slot. So, that's not a bad Intimidate if you're that Mega Minetric. So, Alvin's sitting very, very pretty right now. You know, Landers can get hit with the Leaf Blade. Uh, unfortunately, the sub's up, so uh, can't get another boost. Yeah. One of the few times you'll be disappointed that your physical attacker blocked Intimidate with <laughs> Substitute, but uh, still a pretty solid position for Elvin here. Has to be a little bit more careful now, where, um, you know, Landers is threatening a decent bit of damage, but kind of at what cost? Uh, Lorantis could easily knock out either of these Pokemon in a single blow now, and uh, Manectric certainly threatening a lot of damage onto Snorlax. And Landers actually revealing that it has hidden power, gonna hit into Lorantis. Uh, you know, super effective damage, so probably that hidden power ice that a lot of Landers are carrying in order to deal with other Landers staring. Um, Nectar just gonna go for the Volt Switch here, hit into that Snorlax, but you know, one thing about that is Alvin's actually gonna reveal what his last Pokemon in the back is, which could be good information for Nils to try to make some adjustments. Yeah, I mean, at least you get that info for Nils, but also for Alvin, you know, this game isn't quite over yet. Certainly uh, hard to imagine uh, Lorantis not finishing this one out from here, especially with Incineroar coming in, gonna get a big Intimidate, uh, going to be able to fake out, uh, I guess, 
guess you won't, because it'll be Mimikyu. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no need, regardless. Yep, and the Leaf Blade just easily gets the one-hit KO on that Lantern Snarian. And it's not often where, you know, you have a physical attacker out there. It's been intimidated once, and, you know, it's just picking up KOs on Lantern Snarian, who actually has a very respectable physical bulk. Yeah, but yeah, three levels increased attack, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not bad. And uh, we see a Mimikyu out here against two Pokemon with the Intimidate ability and a very large, very angry Lurantis. And uh, Alvin played a great game here. You don't kind of expect to go to, expect to walk in the World Championship and see Lurantis running over a game, but an absolutely dominant turn one or game one there by Alvin. Yep, Alvin uh, pretty much won that. Uh, once that Lurantis started getting set up, you know, one thing that Nils is going to have to respect is that Lurantis substitute. And Alvin played those substitutes absolutely perfectly throughout game one. Yeah, the adjustment to the usual Lurantis strategy with having that substitute end up being key in that matchup. I mean, it looked easier for Elvin where, in turns where he couldn't keep the speed controlled exactly the way he wanted it to, uh, that substitute was up kind of preventing Nils from really doing much. Because uh, I, I guess Nils will probably not try for the Snorlax Mimikyu thing next game. It just seemed like Elvin had some great answers and uh, some deceptive ones too, because, you know, who's expecting a substitute Lurantis? <laughs> Like you said, what the three moves that are commonly known are Leaf Blade, Superpower, and Knockoff. Instead, for going Knockoff, for going that coverage, for going finding out about what items your opponent has, or protecting your Lorantis even more, Lorantis is the key here. <laughs> Alvin's already punching his team. <laughs> It's like, yeah, <laughs> prove you can beat it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, though, is that, like, well, okay, let's say Nils, like, all right, Snorlax Mimikyu, it's not going to work. Uh, two of his other Pokemon have the Intimidate ability, which is still kind of going to be a pain against Lorantis. So uh, that winds up being a really safe pick for Elvin. I mean, certainly you want to be careful. You don't want to just let Incineroar attack Lorantis, where um, those fire type attacks are going to hurt. But um, Incineroar doesn't want to take superpowers either, so it's not like it can switch in freely the way it can against other grass type Pokemon and other physical attackers. <laughs> Lorantis, the MVP here of Alvin's team. I mean, it picked up, what, three KOs that game, I bet? <laughs> it did almost all the damage. And kind of, if you look at it, like, there isn't really anything on Nils' team that deals with it super well. Like, almost every Pokemon in this team is a physical attacker, and the only one that isn't is Tapu Koko, who um, most of its attacks are going to be resisted by Lorantis. Uh, it does have much lower special defense, but again, Nils doesn't really have a great way to exploit that. Manetric and Lorantis leads that Alvin decides to go with here as Nils uh, going to stick with that Snorlax in Mimikyu. Mimikyu uh, leads that he believes in. And I think Nils does have tools to be able to deal with Alvin, just has to better position that board. Yeah, that's definitely the call he's made. He goes like, all right, the problem wasn't my strategy. The problem was the way the game played out. I probably wasn't expecting substitute. Uh, but Elvin also you know, feeling like, all right, what I did game one is fine. You know, same leads. Uh, we didn't see if this plays out any differently. I feel like... Um, there aren't a whole lot of alternatives to breaking that Mimikyu substitute, but uh, maybe if he's expecting Nils to go with something a little different to anticipate this, he could try to make a tricky play. Meganometric going to take the field that Intimidate ability again. Such an important ability in this format. Uh, you know, Alvin's punishing players for using that Intimidate ability with this Lorantis over here. Uh, you know, it's going to be big on that Mimikyu. Snorlax, of course, can always just maximize its attack set again with that Belly Drum, as I've already said before. And actually using Volt Switch, busting that disguise. So this is playing out exactly like game one is. Uh, how is Nils going to adjust here? You know, obviously, don't let that Lorantis get a substitute up. Now Alvin has to pick what is the best bet to come in. Probably that Cresselia again. You know, if it ain't broke, why, why fix it? No, no, it's the Incineroar here instead. Get another Intimidate out onto that Mimikyu and Snorlax. Yeah, Intimidate could matter if Snorlax doesn't go for the immediate belly drum here. Maybe finding that after game one, it's not worth it to uh, increase its stats again. But uh, so far on the other side of the field, we are seeing what we saw the first time. Yep, a Ghost DMZ is activating here for this Mimikyu. Going to become the center of attention and use that Z Destiny Bond to draw away single type target attacks. Uh, maybe try and take the foe with it as well. But, uh, you know, Lorantz is probably not going to Probably not gonna fall for it here. Snorlax uses Belly Drum, maximizing its attack stat. Nothing's changed so far. Lorance is probably just gonna go for a easy substitute here. Uh, you know, this is a great position for Alvin because you know Snorlax does have that fake out pressure. Yeah, the one big difference is we see Ooh. the superpower coming from uh, Lorantis, unfortunately going to the Mimikyu slot, so uh, that getting drawn away by the D Z Destiny Bond, and now Nils is in a much better position. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, he now knows the speed tiers. I think probably in the first game, uh, Nils is expecting Lorantis to be a little bit quicker, this time not setting up Trick Room, which is going to help him out. Yep, Snorlax now protecting itself as Incineroar does fake out into that Snorlax slot just to be safe as Mimikyu using Taunt, so revealing that, not allowing Lorantis to possibly get up a substitute, so this is actually very bad for Alvin. 
Yeah, so very good adjustments by Elvin, kind of real or by uh, Nils rather, realizing what happened in the first game. Uh, doesn't have to worry about that substitute now. Didn't set up Trick Room, which uh, wound up uh, really be being a problem for it in the previous game. And now the speedy Snorlax uh, able to <laughs> outpace Lorantis here. Uh, likely going to be able to get a big attack off. Uh, certainly attacking that Lorantis slot now is pretty free where it can't protect. Mimi Q retreating on Nils' side as Incineroar takes the field. It is going to give away one Intimidate boost. Yes, I just said that on stream, an Intimidate boost on that Lorantis. It is going to Intimidate that uh, Incineroar over on Alvin's side. going to matter, but Lorantis just kind of switches out here. Cresselli is going to take the field, but this opens up a lot of opportunities for Nils' Snorlax to go on the offensive. Incineroar on Alvin's side uses Flare Blitz here. Going to hit in that Snorlax side. Going to have to try to chip away at it, but oh. That does barely any damage thanks to that Intimidate, and here comes Snorlax releasing all of its frustration from losing to Lorantis last game <laughs> against Hygrostelia, gets the KO, and now Alvin, I think, needs to figure out a way out of this situation. Uh, he's in trouble, too. I mean, one of the problems with Cresselia getting knocked out so quickly now does not have the option of trying to use Trick Room to underspeed Snorlax. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this is going to be rough. The Intimidate is helpful, sort of, but uh, likely not to be enough to really stop Snorlax from taking knockouts. And uh, unless Elvin can quickly cycle some Intimidates, which uh, is looking pretty unlikely, Snorlax is probably going to run over this game. Yeah, you could probably get off another Intimidate if you switch out the Incineroar and then Volt Switch for that Manectric, but uh, at that point, you know, at a four stage increase, Snorlax is still doing damage. Yeah, so yeah, how much damage are you going to take while you set the board back up, right? Where you know, maybe you reset Snorlax's attack, but by the time you do, you don't have any Pokemon left, which makes it uh, tough to win the game. Yeah, you might, you might even just lose a Pokemon at plus four Snorlax frustration. So, uh, you know, Alvin probably already trying to figure out what he's going to do for game three. I mean, Nils just did this game so much better. Uh, Nils going to go for the fake out here, lands into that Incineroar over on Alvin's side. And Manetric going for a Volt Switch, not going to try to loop in another Intimidate until later. Probably just either going to sacrifice this Incinero or the Lorances. Well, not probably, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them is not going to like what happens next. <laughs> Incinero can't move because of that fake out from early, and Snorlax here uses frustration, releasing again all that frustration that's built up against this Incinero, gets the KO there, and Manetric is going to come back in. Snorlax now at three stages increased attack, but again, that's still doing a lot of damage. Yeah, Snorlax is going to get at least one more attack off. Uh, it is very powerful right now, and I uh, also have the trouble even though we're going to get the Intimidate Incineroar, which is starting to make a difference for it. I've you know, got the Fire-type Incineroar facing down Lorantis. Um, unless Hills can find a, or uh, Elvin can find a way to uh, allow Lorantis to attack and maybe get some superpowers rolling, it's hard to imagine a way this could uh, turn around. Yeah, and all really came down to game one, I think, of this, or not game one, turn one of this game. Uh, you know, the fact that Lorantis did not set up that substitute and just allowed Mimikyu to taunt it the next turn. So that's going to be great information to Alvin, for Alvin to have, but also it's going to come down to some mind games. What is Mimikyu going to do on turn one if they don't decide to do any adjustments to the leads? Yeah, I was going to fight, right? Well, uh, Alvin's kind of looking at that. Well, man, there's no way that Nils does the same thing he did the first game. He lost so hard, and then making the same play work because Alvin is, you know, maybe a trying to play a little too far ahead of himself. Yep, Lorant is now protecting himself, not going to want to get KO'd just yet. Minetra is just going to go for a Volt Switch. That's probably its most powerful attack that it has access to. And Cinderella crashing into that Protect with the Flare Blitz as Snorlax uses Frustration, doubling up into it, actually. So that's a good play. I mean, um, you know, perhaps uh, Nils, or Elvin realizing that Nils knows that Lorant is his big threat, and now he kind of... Something could kind of happen here, and maybe Manectric gets a critical hit and Snorlax deals with that. Uh, Lorantis gets the superpower off it in Incineroar. I mean, there's a tiny bit of hope, but still a really tough spot. Still had to survive a Flare Blitz from that Incineroar, Yeah, though. I mean, there's been the Intimidates, but um, like it'll survive, but will survive with enough health uh, that it would matter, you know, assuming that... Well, I guess we'll see, because Snorlax gets a little scared. Snorlax protects itself here. Manectric going for the overheat, just trying to get out as much damage as possible on that Snorlax, as Incineroar going to use U-Turn hitting into that Lorantis slot, not doing that much damage at all, despite the super effectiveness of it. Thanks to, again to those Intimidates from the Manetric and the Incineroar over on Alvin's side. This does open up an opportunity for Lorantis to maybe try to set up or just go for some damage. Yeah, it's going to have a tough time too. I mean, you, you, you expect they probably tried to use Super Power last turn, so no matter what Pokemon it targeted, it's going to whiff. Uh, maybe he made a, yeah, fortunately misses the Super Power. So, uh, dead turn for Elvin there. Uh, did a nice job blocking the attack to the Protect in the previous turn, but I'm able to do anything this time. All right, so now we're in a spot where uh, Mimikyu, Mimikyu is out. Uh, overheat, it's going to be close as to whether or not you get the KO on Snorlax. 
Yeah, I mean, I would expect it to. Um, kind of either way. I mean, have, losing the special attack and Manectric is a big deal. Uh, normally, there'd be some, te some te temptation on Nils' side to switch Incineroar in, but you really don't want to give uh, Lorantis the free Intimidate if you're going to take Snorlax off the field. So, uh, a little bit tricky, but... It's still hard to see. I like Elvin fighting back, though. You know, he's at least put this he's back not, in doubt. He's not giving up. You never give up. Panetric <laughs> now using overheat. Connects with Snorlax. Snorlax hangs on with just a sliver of health as Mimikyu uses his turn to go for a taunt. Man, that would have been a great substitute last, last turn if uh, Lorantis was able to get it up. But Snorlax now using frustration on a Mega Manetric gets the KO in Lorantis versus the world. Lorantis does go for a superpower, does fail into that Mimikyu slot, though, so. Uh, maybe expecting a switch uh, into the Incineroar there. Yeah, kind of a little hopeful, I guess, but I mean, when you're down in a game like that, you've got the sort of play you've got to make, right? Where uh, you need to be hitting home runs because, you know, singles are no longer going to be enough. <laughs> uh, there were definitely some opportunities for Alvin to claw back right there, but, you know, Nils takes that in pretty dominating fashion. 4-0 uh, victory versus Alvin. After Alvin had such a strong game one, Nils comes back with a very strong game two. So now it comes down to game three. Scott, my favorite game. Yeah, I'll be very curious to see if both sides sort of start with the same leads again. Um, I, th I thought for sure that Nils is going to go in a different direction that time, uh, maybe just feeling like his back Pokemon aren't the option. But uh, it was kind of funny to see you know him just not making an adjustment. Uh, Elvin kind of feeling like, all right, it's game two, I've got to do different things. He, 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 um, he kind of psyched himself out. Um, so I'll be curious to see if both sides go back to what they did the first game, or maybe this will be the time Nils switches it up and he'll juke uh, Elvin again. Jumping back now into team preview. Big adjustments here. Uh, both players are currently 3-0, trying to move on to 4-0 and get so much closer to punching their ticket to the top cut here of the 2018 Pokemon World Championships. And again, you know, this Lorantis needs to be able to set up at the right time. You know, you can't get too too hungry for those superpower boosts. You have to time it right and make sure you avoid those taunts as well. I'm really curious to see how this game will go. I feel like the game one was a mix of, like, what the heck is a Lorantis? And then <laughs> um, kind of... You know, maybe uh, misreading some things on Nils' side, where uh, not only did Nils get comfortable in game two, like I feel like El Elvin is a little bit excited, um, trying to play a little bit fast, which you can do, I guess, when you're up game one, right? You can take some risks. You know, had he hit the prediction turn one of game two, uh, the series would be over already. So uh, this time, maybe both sides are going to play a little bit more conservative. Uh, it's, it's a tough match. It's a really complicated matchup where making the wrong play in turn one with uh, Mimikyu Snorlax involved usually determines the outcome of the game. Yeah, I mean, if you time your trick or wrong, uh, you know, you don't belly drum at the right time. You miss one beat with that Mimikyu Snorlax lead, and you're kind of just playing on the back pedal. You know, Snorlax, all right, I know I say it here, Snorlax usually enjoys facing off against Trick Room, in Trick Room, but, you know, this Lorantis is slower. So, uh, yeah, Nils has to time his Trick Rooms properly if he does decide to use Trick Room. Yeah, pretty and cool to see, mode. too. Uh, like a lot of the Lorantis I've seen, you know, tend to be trained with at least a little bit of speed. Um, the Brave Nature is pretty common, but uh, I'll have to go quick enough to go to be faster than minimum speed Snorlax on purpose. Uh, not doing that, definitely making a big difference on this version of the team. Yeah, and you know, uh, we saw it, you know, Nils was a bit flustered when it came down to game one because, you know, it's Cresselia and the Lorantis sandwich that Snorlax. Incineroar and, uh, Incineroar and Lurantis leads for Alvin as Nils is going to go ahead and put all of his eggs here in game three in the basket of Mimikyu Snorlax. Yeah, I'm not super psyched to see this, but uh, one thing I do like on Alvin's side is this kind of this adjustment to have Incineroar out. Uh, because of this, he won't get to break Mimikyu's disguise, but uh, Mimikyu has kind of not wound up being a big deal early in these matches anyway, where uh, after turn one attacks haven't been going to the Mimikyu slot until the game is essentially over. Uh, this way, Alvin can use Fake Out if he wants to and kind of just avoid having to play the guessing game with what Snorlax is going to do completely on the first turn. Uh, likely going to require some adjustment with Nils here, where the way he's played safely the previous two turns is now a little less safe. It's kind of interesting, you know, what is Nils going to go for? Is he going to go for the taunt, or is he going to go for the Z Destiny Bond? Mimikyu goes for a taunt here, going to try to prevent a setup from the uh, Lorenzis, and here comes a taunt from that Mimikyu, or from the Incineroar onto that Mimikyu. Snorlax is able to set up a Belly Drum, though, Gonna go ahead and heal back all of its health with that Gluttony ability and maximize its attack stat. So uh, is Lorantis gonna go for a superpower or is Lorantis gonna go for a substitute and fall for that taunt? And it looks like Lorantis goes straight for the superpower here. Gonna land into that Snorlax slot. Again, we saw it do about 50% the first game, but you know, another superpower will be able to KO thanks to these boosts. Yeah, Zumin gets the chance. Um 
It's going to be tough now for uh, Elvin to position himself in a way we can actually finish the Snorlax off. Uh, I kind of wonder if when the we saw the taunt of it wouldn't be coming in on the Snorlax to prevent that belly drum completely. Uh, this will stop Mimikyu from doing some of its uh, trickier moves. You can still, I believe you can still use Z Destiny yeah, Bond. You can still use Z Destiny Bond. So you can't re move attacks away from Snorlax once, which is going to be pretty tough to stop. And uh, you already saw the kind of piddly damage Incineroar did to Snorlax in a previous match. So um, if he's only concerned about Lorantis, he can save the, the Z Destiny Bond a little while longer, um, but that'll be one great thing to do while this taunt is active if he keeps these two Pokemon out in the field. And Lorantis can't even protect himself because of that taunt. Lorantis forced to switch. Manetric can take the field, not Mega, so no Intimidate. That actually might hurt Alvin, and it looks like here comes the Z Destiny Bond from that Mimikyu. Again, that's an interesting mechanic with Z moves. You know, it kind of bypasses all effects on that Pokemon. And here it comes. It's going to redirect all attacks away, single, tar tar single target attacks away from that Snorlax. Uh, probably Incineroar here going to bust this disguise. Does Incineroar does go crashing into that Mimikyu with the Flare Blitz here, busting that disguise. And Snorlax is free to pick up one KO of its choice here. Yeah, I mean, these are both pretty important Pokemon, too. Uh, you're going to have to worry but a little bit less about the Intimidate from here. One of the two potential Intimidate Pokemon going down, and it's going to be uh, Alvin's Mega Evolve Pokemon never actually Mega Evolving this time. Yeah, so Mega... Or, sorry, Manetric gets KO'd right off the bat. Uh, no chance for it to be that speedy Pokemon with that Intimidate support that Alvin really wants it to be. And, you know, Nils is really trying to pick up this KO against his Lorantis. Cresselia does take the field here, but again, you know, Alvin, not in the best spot. Yeah, I mean, he's got Cresselia out, so in theory he could try to get Trick Room up and get that speed advantage with Lorantis, but I, I'm not certain how he's going to be able to pull that off from here. Uh, Snorlax still is fully powered up because you know, Incineroar started the battle, I mean, I never got to use Intimidate, and I just don't know how you drag yourself out of this one. Really great start for Nils once again. There's just no way, like, Snorlax is just going to get a KO, and then it's going to come down last things. Mimikyu can always reverse Trick Room as well. Incineroar is going to take the field for the Mimikyu. Intimidate is going to be big against Alvin's Incineroar. Yeah, you're probably trying to avoid a double target here. Yeah, Snorlax is going to have to protect. I forgot about the Z-move on Cresselia, so Snorlax is definitely in danger of being knocked out. Yeah, so uh, Cresselia is just going for a normal Psychic into that uh, Snorlax slot. Incineroar also going for a Flare Blitz into that slot as well, so, uh, you know, Alvin still has the chances to try to get the KO on the Snorlax, and that's going to be a big KO. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Right? You know, you've got to try to burn Snorlax down and set up Trick Room and hope that Lorantis can finish the game. Uh, this is going to make it much more difficult. Now there is Incineroar out in the field. I uh, can fake out one of these two Pokemon. We've already seen that the uh, Psyche Z isn't enough to let Cresselia get the knockout from here, and it's not even going to get the chance. Yeah, Cresselia flinches and cannot move. Incineroar using Taunt here on that Snorlax, but uh, Snorlax is probably going to be able to go for a very powerful attack. Uh, really, that Taunt just to prevent any sort of uh, recovery option with that recycle or protecting. So now this actually allows Alvin to go for a powerful Shattered Psyche, but is it going to be enough to get the KO on Snorlax? Yeah, I mean, I think we saw in the first game, likely not, right? Uh, and then Snorlax, if it gets to attack, will take out one of these two Pokemon, and that'll pretty much clean up the game. So I don't think I have to hope that either he gets a higher damage roll this time or perhaps a critical hit because uh, he's in trouble if not. Yep, and uh, we've seen it before in this World Championships, you know, critical hit Z-move. That just adds so much more damage on top of already a powerful attack, and that is what Alvin's going to have to hope for here against this Snorlax. So here it comes. Priscilla actually using Ally Switch here, uh, maybe trying to protect, protect that Lorantis uh, as Incineroar going for a Flare Blitz. Uh, it is going to go ahead and target down what was that Lorantis slot. It hits in that Cresselia, bringing it down to about 60% of its hit points remaining. Snorlax now using Frustration, lands in that Cresselia slot. This could be pretty big if Lorantis can get the KO on that Snorlax slot. Lorantis now using Super Power, hitting into that Snorlax. Is it enough to get the KO? It is not enough to get the KO. And the next turn, Nils will be able to clean up. Yeah, it's pretty close there. I mean, maybe with a critical hit, it could have made something happen. Certainly would have had a lot of Pokemon to go through, uh, including that Incineroar, but uh, not this time. Elvin had a very dominating game one, but Nils just stormed back, uh, made much better plays the first tur turn or two of game two and three and was able to take the set. Yeah, and one thing to note, you know, that substitute on Lorantis came into such a big play that Nils, you know, kind of realized that.